Chapter 2, Written in the Rocks Fossil record. The fossil record is tangible historical evidence for evolution. Discovering, extracting, preparing fossils takes a lot of time and is expensive and risky. Fossils are very valuable because without these historical artifacts, we have no proof of evolution. How fossils are formed. The remains of animals or plants find their way into the bottom of the ocean, then are covered by sediment so that they don't decay or get scattered by scavengers, and the hard parts of the fossils are replaced by dissolved minerals. Fossils are rare because they have to survive endless shifting, folding, heating, and crushing of the Earth's crust after being formed. The fossils then have to be discovered buried deep into the Earth. They can only be found when they are raised by the erosion of wind or rain. Only 1% of the total estimate estimated number of species to have lived on earth have been discovered radioisotopes in some igneous rocks there are certain radioactive elements called radioisotopes radioisotopes gradually decay into other elements at a constant rate expressed as half-life which in the time required for half the isotope to disappear if we know the half-life and how much remains, it's easy to estimate the age of rocks. In the graph shown is an example of a carbon-14 isotope, which 50% of the starting material is the half-life. Big Patterns The fossil record showing first appearance of various forms of life that arose since the Earth formed from bottom to top. The first organisms arose around 3.5 five billion years ago. The earliest organisms were the prokaryotes, then came the Cambrian period with fish chordates, then the Ordovician period with sudden diversification of metazoan families, uh, then the Silurian period with the first vascular land plants, then the Devonian period with the first amphibians and jawed fish. And then came the Carboniferous period with the first reptiles, scale trees, and seed ferns. Then the per Permian period had major extinctions and um, diversity of reptiles. The Triassic period had the first mammals and the first dinosaurs. The Jurassic period has, had the first birds and uh, diversity of dinosaurs. The Cretaceous period had extinction of dinosaurs, the first primates, and the first flowering plants. The Tertiary period um, had more diversity of mammals. And lastly, the Quaternary period had evolution of humans. And all these periods are um, within four eras. The Late Proto Proterozoic, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Fossilized, fossilized evolution and speciation. To show gradual evolutionary change within a single lineage, you need a good succession of sediments and without any missing layers, which would be represented um, as a jump. For example, the Globarotolia conoidea, a marine foraminiferin, creates more chambers as it grows. This shows the change in traits over time. Another example is the trilobites, which is an arthropod and is the same group as insects and spiders. They are more complex marine foraminiferans. As shown on the chart to the right, each year that passes by, there is a gradual change. There is no jump shown in the graph. Missing links. According to evolutionary theory, for every two species, there was one single species that was the ancestor of both. We call this the missing link. Biologists assumed from anatomical evidence that birds were closely related to reptiles. A transitional species is not equivalent to an ancestral species. It's simply showing a mixture of traits from both organisms that lived before and after. Onto the land, from fish to amphibians. A transitional form between fish and amphibian. Most creatures were tetrapods, four-footed vertebrates that walked on land. 
One example is the Tiktaalik rosé, which is a large freshwater fish. Um, this fish tells us a lot about how vertebrates came to live on land. They had fewer and sturdier bones in their limbs, similar to every land creature which came later, including us humans. Its limbs are best described as part fin and part leg. Tiktaalik has features that make it a direct link between the earlier lobe finned fish and later amphibians. Tiktaalik has two traits. They had gills, fins, and scales. Therefore, it was a fish living in water. Also, it had amphibian-like features, um, with its flattened head, eyes, and nostrils, which were on top rather than on the sides. Into the thin air, the origin of the birds. The first link between birds and reptiles was actually known to Darwin. Birds evolved from early reptiles due to natural selection. Theropods were agile, carnivorous dinosaurs that walked on two legs. Most famous of transitional forms is the Archaeopteryx, the Geographica. The picture shown on the right shows the Archaeopteryx having two specific traits, which are reptilian and bird. Archaeopteryx came from Germany. Archaeopteryx is really more reptile than bird. The two distinct traits were the reptilian and the bird traits. Reptilian traits were the reptilian feathers, long bony tail, claws, separate fingers, and neck. The bird-like traits were large feathers, Opposable big toe, which was used for perching. The figure shown on the left is the Cynotosaurus millennia. This is a fossil found which was called the Chinese bird lizard. It was covered with long, thin feathers, feathers so small that they couldn't possibly have helped it. Fly. The figure in the middle is a my my long fossil. The my long was a fe feathered theropod dinosaur fossilized in a bird-like roosting position, sleeping with its head tucked under its forelimb. The figure on the right is the four-winged dinosaur called the Microraptor gui. The Microraptor gui has long feathers on both its forelimbs and hindlimbs. It's a 30 inch creature that had fully feathered arms and legs which when stretched out were probably used for gliding. Back to the water. The evolution of whales. Whales and their relatives are mammals and they are warm blooded. Whales evolved from a species of artiodactyls. Artiodactyls, which are a group of mammals that have an even number of toes, such as pigs and camels. Recently discovered fossil was called the Indohyce. Indohyce was a raccoon-sized animal living 48 million years ago. They were largely aquatic ancestors of whales. Biologists now believe that the closest living relatives of whales is the hippopotamus. The figure on the right shows the ancestral descendant relationship of the Indohyes going to the whales, the modern whales. What the fossils say is three important factors that fossils teach us are the gradual change within lineages, splitting of lineages, and the existence of transitional forms. Finding transitional forms that occur in the fossil record 
Evolutionary change, even of major sort, nearly always involves remodeling the old into the new.